Good job. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> We're here with another possible one take video. Fingers crossed. We're going to talk about Baja because we're leaving in less than a week and we've been telling you that we were going to make a video for I think about uh, six months now. <laughs> so we're going to do it real quick. Uh, I'm Greg. This is Jess. Hi. We live in this van now. Uh, you can see the orange instead of green. So we moved. Uh, we're going to do a tour of this sometime in the near future. But we get asked a lot about Baja because we went a couple years ago and uh, we're gonna try and answer some of those questions here so yeah I don't know what this video is about yet but we're gonna do it right now yeah so um, I'm gonna put timestamps in the description if you guys want to skip ahead but essentially the basis of what we're gonna cover is gonna be the border crossing and security checkpoints um, we're gonna talk about tourist safety in Baja and steps that you can take in order to stay safe and smart and then also how to prep for your trip so um, I'll kind of go through all that stuff we'll talk about it I'll put timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead if you know some of that stuff or not and then we'll also be linking a bunch of products too because we're going to talk about a lot of products that have come in handy for us not just in Baja but in van life in general as well so um, we're talking maps guidebooks vehicle accessories things like that so uh, let's start with the border crossing. So one thing that's really a big misconception is that you need a tourist visa to go to Mexico. Technically, uh, you only need a tourist visa if you're staying for more than 180 days. What you need is an FMM card. So what that means is it's just basically a half sheet of paper that you fill out and um, you actually don't even need an FMM card if you're going for less than seven days. So if you're doing a real sh short trip, you can just go straight through the border checkpoint and once you're done with the vehicle inspection and them checking your passports you can just keep driving but if you're staying anywhere between seven days and 180 days you have to get that FMM card now you can apply for an FMM card online but you do still have to stop at the migration office and get it stamped um, it costs about 575 pesos per person so that's around 30 US dollars and you're gonna fill out that form you're gonna pay the guy, they're gonna stamp it, and you have to have that form on you at all times. Not on your person, but with you, like if you leave your passports in a safe in the van or something, you have to have it with you showing that you came into the country legally, and they will ask for it when you leave, supposedly. Um, they, they're supposed to also ask for it when you cross from Baja Norte into Baja Sur. We didn't get asked, but we had heard horror stories about if you didn't get the card and then you tried to get into Baja Sur they would make you drive all the way back to get it so Tanzanata yeah which is pretty far <laughs> it's pretty far quick note uh, as always do your own research too this is just what we've learned uh, we also know a bunch of people that have gone down that live here in Southern California and they've never gotten this card before and they said they've never had an issue um, we'd rather pay the $30 since we're going to be down there for longer period and don't want to deal with coming back if they do turn us back. Yeah, exactly. It's such a small deal for us that, I mean, you literally go through the, the border we, where they check your passports and then you like make a turn into the migration office parking lot. And then all you do is walk in and fill out this paper and pay for it. So, um, one thing that I will say is it's easy to miss. We've had some friends who've driven right past it. They don't realize that you have to like stop right there at the border. So then they end up driving around town trying to figure out how to get back. We've had um, people that have had to cross back into the U.S. and then go back into Mexico again, which turns into can be hours. So yeah, just stop right when you get across and figure it out. Yeah, like go slow. Don't feel stressed. Like ask questions. They're there to help you. Usually there's people standing around like waving you in to where you need to go. So just pay attention and don't get stressed. And if I recall correctly, we needed cash last time. Yeah, so... Depends on where you're I at. I think you do have to pay in cash. Um, I don't know if you need exact change or not, but... So the other thing that's important for the border crossing is having a passport that doesn't expire within the next six months. This is a pretty standard rule for going into any country, that if your passport expires within six months, they won't let you in. And that is the case with Mexico, so... Because they think you're going to live there. Yeah. <laughs> and milk the system in Mexico. <laughs> yes, or whatever country you're going to. Right, so check your passport before you show up. Um, the other thing that people always talk about is vehicle insurance. Mm. Do you want to go over that at all? or? 
We buy vehicle insurance. <laughs> uh, also, I know people that go down and don't buy any down there, which means they're not covered. But I do believe by law you're supposed to have it. Um, we use Lewis and Lewis. Uh, we found that they were the least expensive for comparable coverage to a couple of the other companies out there. Uh, we just had it quoted again the other day for a one-year policy was 520-ish, 530 dollars yeah. uh, for the van. And you put in how much you value the vehicle at. Um, I think what is it, Baja Bound? Mm -hmm. And what's the third one? There's a third big one, right? Yeah, I don't remember. All There's of another that. one, but Baja Bound's the other real popular one. Uh, so check them both out, see which one works better for you. Um, if you're staying more than I think it's like 20 days, you're better off buying a six month policy. So just figure out how long you're going to be down there. And if you get close, maybe just go for the six month or the year. Uh, six month for us was just over 400 and the year was 530. So mm -hmm. we're going to do a year because we might go back in October again to a secret surf spot. <laughs> yeah, so shopping for Mexican auto insurance is actually really easy. Um, the companies that Greg just mentioned have online web forms that you can just plug in information with, with what vehicle type you're insuring, so whether it's a, an RV, a van camper, an automobile, and what you value it at, how long you wanna be down there, and it'll just spit out a number for you. And then you can get different kinds of plans like plan A, B, C, and it'll give you the prices. So it's really easy to shop around. So you might as well at least look and see what it's gonna cost you. Um, the other thing is dogs. So we don't have pets, but uh, all the research that I did is that it's actually become a much simpler process now. As of December, 2019, uh, Mexico does not require proof of vaccines or shots anymore they simply will have an agent inspect your pet and make sure that they're not they don't have like visibly open wounds they don't have signs of disease or infection and then they'll let you in i did read somewhere that you are only allowed to have three pets like three traditional pets cats or dogs huh. they don't they don't count like snakes or birds as pets um but you might have other issues with exotic animals. You'll have to do your own research there. But as far as cats and dogs, I think they will allow more than three. There's just a fee of some kind. So do and, your research. And the food situation. Yeah, I had read in several places that you're only allowed to carry one day's worth of dog or cat food with you. Um, we've had friends that have traveled with dogs and said that they had huge bags with them and it wasn't a problem. So I'm not really sure like what the justification for that rule is. But Just a heads up. Yeah, just so you know. What else? So another thing for crossing the border would be get pesos ahead of time. Um, do you want to talk about money? I guess I'm going to talk about money. I haven't prepared for any of this. She's <laughs> literally telling me what I'm going to talk about as we go. Uh, money. We talked about money today. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, we don't like to carry a large amount of cash with us just in case something crazy happens. You know, you get robbed, you get broken into, anything like that. So. Uh, what we did was started a Charles Schwab uh, money, it's, checking it's like a checking account, yeah, yeah, I think it's a high interest checking account, and with that, we get a debit card, and I don't know if they still do it, but for ours, it reimburses us for any ATM fees around the world, so we did a big trip to Southeast Asia, and every time you put in the debit card to get cash, it's like a $10 fee on their end, and then there was like another $5 fee on our end, usually. And we're only trying to pull out like 50 bucks at a time, so it, it wasn't worth it. Uh, so these guys, you just get it paid back at the end of the month. So check it out. It worked great for us. So we'll transfer, you know, like a, like a $1,000 into the Charles Schwab account and uh, keep some U.S. dollars with us, cash, some pesos with us cash and then uh, have that debit card as an option and then we try to use our credit card for everything down there as much as we can because it goes on the current exchange rate and if your credit card gets stolen or something like that everybody worries about your credit card getting stolen it's covered so whatever they take it I'll just call it in and say my credit card was stolen and then should get all that money back so that works for us mm -hmm. um, as for buying pesos uh, we talked about doing it through the bank and I think we had decided we we're just gonna do it by the little exchange place by the border also we stay at this 
uh, hotel down in Cabo San Lucas and they give us like a great exchange rate. So if we know we can have a certain amount ahead of time, when we get there we can re-up and get a good exchange rate. So there are certain places that will do exchange for the actual value. So today I checked it was uh, one US dollar was 20 pesos ish. You'll find places that will only give you 16 pesos for your dollar. Mm -hmm. So you're losing a bunch of money there. So just you know, make sure you're getting close to the right exchange rate. Yeah, exactly. I think that covered it. Yeah, so cards without international banking fees are your friends, both credit and debit cards. They'll cover you or they'll forgive you for any of that, which is key. Um, carry both dollars and pesos, but if you have those cards, then you don't have to carry that much money with you. It used to be like, you know, 15 years ago, you'd have to roll down with all cash because no one took credit cards. But now we pay for all of our gas with credit cards. We pay at grocery most stores with our credit cards, most restaurants. So there's really no reason to be like rolling around with a bunch of cash. It's just a risk to you. So yeah, and then obviously shopping for the best exchange rate. It's almost always better to pay in pesos. So even if you are paying with a credit card at a restaurant, sometimes they'll ask you if you wanna pay in dollars or pesos, just say pesos, because then you don't have to pay the exchange rate at the restaurant. A lot of times they'll say, okay, but we'll we'll do the exchange rate at like 14 or 15 pesos to a dollar, and then you're ending up overpaying. So just yep. try to pay in pesos and then don't worry about it on the back end because your bank will do the conversion for you when it actually pulls the money out of your account. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the money thing, um, which kind of segues into security checkpoints and travel safety. So when we talk about the security checkpoints, a lot of people are intimidated by it because you pull up to this random checkpoint that feels like it's isolated in the middle of nowhere and it's manned by 17 year old federales holding automatic weapons. Um, or semi automatic. We don't know. We've never <laughs> don't fired know. them. Um, it's just best to keep your head about you and one thing that we always try to do is uh, have a dummy wallet and so we have most of our money uh, tucked away we have you know a couple safes secret, hidden yeah secret safe secret safe in the van um, where most of our money is hidden and we only have like you know whatever we need for that day 20 or 40 dollars out in our wallets and we also have like fake driver's license, well, expired driver's <laughs> license and, and credit Stop. cards. We don't have fake IDs. Maybe Greg will have like a credit card that he's using and I'll have one or two ones that I'm not using in mine. We're not paranoid, I promise. No, but it's just more like if someone sees that and that's they're going to grab it, they're going to think they got you. They're going to stop looking for anything else. So that we do it. It doesn't really seem to make difference, but... I mean, we've had, so there's, I think, five checkpoints on the way down, and they were all super mellow each way. We only had one stop where the, there was one gentleman that um, seemed to be going extra thorough and was in our glove box digging around pretty good. We didn't have any money in there, but um, it didn't feel right. And we have heard of stories where people have had some cash just taken and you know we just try to minimize that if it if it's an opportunistic person just trying to grab something that's easy then if it's not there they're not going to grab it uh, they did try to shake me down for my beer once <laughs> he was super nice yeah I mean, we had a case of beer on the floor and he kept hitting it with this little metal rod and he just kept saying me me and i said <laughs> no 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 <laughs> uh, gave him some oatmeal, oatmeal cream pies we've heard that they love those down there and can't get them. I don't know if we've never looked at them I don't know. at the store, but we bring yeah. them with just because yeah. we heard that and they seem pretty stoked about them. So, right. um, you know, if the people are being nice and, and they're out in the hot, just sitting out there in the hot weather, it's nice to give them something every once in a while. Uh, might, might make things easier too. Yeah. So like, I don't want to downplay the seriousness of just being safe and making smart decisions, but they, our experience was at the security checkpoint people were nice and they didn't feel intimidating yeah. um still when you when you stop at a checkpoint most likely they'll ask to look and when you get out of the van and open the doors just put your wallet in your in your pocket or put put your purse on your shoulder so you have it with you and then have one person with the guy that's walking around if you have two people that makes it a little easier because sometimes they have someone looking in the slider door and looking in the back door 
but if you are alone then you can just open doors with them um, and just make sure that you stay with them so that you can see what they're doing because and sometimes too they'll ask you to like open bins and stuff it was not our experience that they ever like started digging around in our stuff on their own they always would be like can you open this or can you open this so it's always good to be with them um, usually when you pull up they'll you roll down your window they'll ask you where you're going um, we would always say either Cabo San Lucas or if we were headed back north we'd say San Diego and then you know they'd ask you if we spoke Spanish or English usually yeah. we'd say no you know no we don't really speak Spanish yeah on the way down I tried to speak Spanish to them and we found that that made the the uh, searches take longer yeah so on the way up I just played total like just stupid and just <laughs> stared at them kind of and just said no no and then sometimes like two of them I think they literally just were like and just waved us on yeah so, so then they'll ask if you have drugs or weapons usually armas Dr drugas and armas uh, you can just say no no drugs no weapons um, and then yeah it's it's pretty easy don't bring drugs or weapons don't bring drugs or weapons don't look like you have drugs or weapons don't be defensive don't act paranoid just be nice like <laughs> They're just doing their job and you're just trying to travel through their country, so. And <laughs> we don't know, we haven't had the situation, but if they do try to shake us down for money for something that we're not doing wrong, um, ideally we will hold strong and not pay a random fine to get out. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when the time comes. But yes. I have read you can always ask for a supervisor. You can ask to be escorted to the police station in order to get documentation. Um, I think when you're getting bribed or they're trying to get you to bribe them, it's more of a get more people involved so that you can find out if it's legitimate or if they're just trying to... Take some you know. easy money. Yeah. So... Um, this goes for anywhere if you're <laughs> traveling. Exactly. And that kind of leads into our tourist safety tips, which... I feel like a lot of it is self-explanatory, but a lot of times we get so comfortable, um, you know, in the United States and we don't really think about it, but there are I really, do. there really are unsafe places in the United States and there are places in Baja that are even more safe than those places in the United States. It just depends on where you're at. So, um, one thing we already talked about was the dummy wallet. Um, don't buy drugs in Mexico. <laughs> it's just a bad idea. And we get offered a lot. It will get offered a lot. Um, it's not legal there, period. So just stay away from it. You'll end up getting involved with some people that are probably shady or you'll end up getting framed by police because they do that a lot too. Um, be aware of scams. So obviously, like Greg said, if there's someone who's looking for an opportunity, tourists are opportunities. You know, we're walking around with money and sometimes you don't really realize it until you're in it, but there's taxi scams. Uh, there's gas station scams, there's counterfeit product, obviously. Um, supposedly there's like, I don't know if it's really a scam, but there's a lot of these like tequila tasting and mezcal tasting things going on where they give you all these samples and then you basically get drunk and they walk you into this, you know, the gift shop and they want you to spend all this money on trinkets mm -hmm. that aren't actually that valuable. They'll, you know, try to sell you like silver jewelry and stuff that's that not real. Smart. It's good business, according to Greg. <laughs> you want to overpay for jewelry? Go for, go right ahead. <laughs> uh, but the gas station scam, uh, I don't know how they got. They got us in St. Martin yeah. uh, with that one. And I think they just think really gypped us on the conversion rate. Yeah. And I figured it out and went back and yelled and got my money back like an hour later. It was very awkward for the gas station. Um <laughs> But in Mexico, you know, we've heard, just ask them to zero out the the meter when you get there. Yeah, because you um, can't pump your own gas. Yeah, so, you know, I always just double check to make sure they zero it so you're not paying for the last person's gas and yours. Um, but I don't think we've had to worry about that issue. Mm -hmm. The biggest issue we have is they try to say that we have a diesel vehicle when it's gas, and I just keep, keep saying gasolina, which I don't know if it's actually <laughs> correct for gas, but... I think it's petrol, but... Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, we'll have to look that up. Next? Um, yes, that's about all I have for tourist safety, other than just, I mean, travel in numbers. If you can caravan, then that helps as well. If you speak Spanish, that's going to help. Uh, don't walk around at night by yourself. 
Those We're going things. solo. We don't speak Spanish, <laughs> and we will be enjoying uh, downtown at night. <laughs> so, wish us luck. Uh, we'll be fine. <laughs> but one thing with that, I was thinking about, like in a, you know, the big cities, that's more of a concern for me uh, with leaving the van try to park it somewhere that seems logical same in in the u.s you know you get to a big city here i don't just go and leave it in the middle of nowhere in a big city ideally i'm going to put it on a high traffic area that just someone's going to break into it hopefully someone's there to see it and stop it or call the police or do something uh, but just using common sense yeah and that's the same as like just not making yourself a target um you know don't We've had friends that have gotten wetsuits stolen overnight because they're camping on a beach and they they just leave them hanging out on their mirrors and yeah, it's easy just, grab. Yeah, like you may be able to do that in Northern California or wherever, but mm -hmm. I still wouldn't do it. Even I mean, we wouldn't, but yeah. Uh, where's our other little gadget for safety that we oh, had? Oh yeah, we just bought these. This. Oh, not is that bad. What you're talking about? No, but oh. that works. So we bought these uh, cable locks because I'm going to mount surfboards outside the van because they're too big. Uh, so obviously they can cut through this pretty easily, um, but it's a deterrent. And you know, if it's out there at night while we're sleeping, if someone starts messing with them, I ideally will feel it. Uh, our friend Frenchy in a van, linked below. Uh, <laughs> someone was just trying to steal her bike off the back of her van while she was sleeping in it. And she woke up and yelled and scared him off. Yeah. So, you know, ideally you feel it. It's just a deterrent, right? It's yeah. no guarantee. No, I was talking about the Garmin. Oh, that's in there. Right in front there. We also recently snagged the Garmin InReach Mini, which we will tag down below for you to find too. But this thing um, can send messages to basically whoever you want wherever you want it's on a satellite network so for mexico when we went last time you know we had sections where we wouldn't have phone service for four or five days or whatever mm -hmm. um, so this go around we will be able to send out messages to the family it will link our location and then it does have an sos feature an emergency button you can hit anywhere in the world and it will send help in case of really bad situation so um for us, you know, we do some backpacking, uh, hunting, off trail, things of that nature, and we're going to Alaska ideally. So we're going to be going through Canada, where I don't think there's a lot of service. A lot of Baja doesn't have service. Basically, we're in places that don't have service. So we're hoping that this will be a good little, uh, little extra lifeline, or be able to stay in touch with people if need be. Yeah. We're down to 10% on our battery, so we better get cranking. Okay, so that kind of segues into vehicle prep and things that we have with us in case we get stuck or hitting all of those dirt roads to those remote beaches that we're talking about. So um, we're talking about a couple of maps and guidebooks that are really helpful. We have the Camping Mexico's Baja book, which I've looked at and she put a bunch of tabs in put it. put a bunch of tabs for camp spots we literally bought that because last year we found one really well two years ago one really awesome campsite and we had some friends that had that book and uh i said just for that campsite alone we need the book so we have it so we've got the surfer's guide to baja obviously you don't need this if you're not going to surf but talks about a lot of the surf breaks camping nearby food nearby so that's helpful um, we also have the National Geographic maps that are good for navigation. And then I would recommend a couple of apps as well. So iOverlander is a great app for finding boondocking sites in Baja. There's literally a ton of sites that are tagged down there. They talk about how good the service is, how accessible the site is, um, how safe it felt, that, those kinds of things. So that's a really good app to have. And then we use maps.me which is a good app for offline navigation. So what happens is you actually download the map data for the region of Baja, and then you can look at roads and, and navigate when you don't have phone service as well, because you have that whole region downloaded onto your device. Yeah, so download them before you go. Exactly. Because you'll get to sections where your Google Maps just stops working. And then once you lose that, 
you're just wandering. Yeah, so. It helps. Um, so you want to inspect your vehicle before you go, obviously. Uh, this is going to vary depending on your vehicle condition, but I mean, generally speaking, you're looking for tire quality. You know, you want to check out your spare and make sure that it's in decent shape. If you've got suspension problems, that will probably be an issue on the road. You want to check your brakes, um, fan belts, spark plugs. I mean, just do a good once over. And if you're not really comfortable with doing that in your vehicle, it's probably worth paying someone like whatever their hourly rate is just to do a once over and make sure that you're road ready. Um, a couple things that we recommend carrying along with you are mostly self-recovery oriented. So do you want to talk about any of that stuff? Sure. Okay. So we have Tread Pro uh, recovery boards. I don't know mm -hmm. what you call them, but you know, the four foot uh, big old plastic things that you can shove under the tires if you get stuck. Uh, we have two shovels or just one in here? Two shovels. Mm -hmm. We got the poop shovel. <laughs> We probably have like four shovels. Yeah, still. we do. But digging shovels. We got a poop shovel and then an avalanche shovel. Yeah. Um, that we've had around forever, so we can use that to dig out a little bit and then put the recovery pads in there. We have a toe strap in case we're stuck and someone else can pull us, so we can strap to them in case they don't have one. Yep. Um, and we also uh, have an air compressor, and we have Ston's air down uh the air down kit so basically it's these valves that go onto our tires and drop the pressure down to a predetermined amount we drop them down to like 33 pounds so wait makes it much easier on bumpy gravel roads smoother less wear and tear on the interior mm -hmm. your tires are going to wear a little faster but it's not going to make a difference and then we can pump them back up with our air compressor Yep. Is that all of the? Yep. That's all the that? stuff for self recovery. Yeah. So you're also going to be looking at possibly adding a light bar to your vehicle, oh, yeah, um, extra gas cans if you don't have long range on your vehicle. There's, there's this section called the Great Gas Gap in Baja, and I think it's maybe a hundred miles or something. So yeah. So you Volkswagen vehicles... Vanagans might be in trouble. <laughs> so you might need that. Just look into how to mount it and how to carry extra fuel. Just get gas when you're at like a half a tank and you see a gas station. <laughs> because yeah. last time I got scared because we were like, oh, we're going to this next town and there's a gas station. And we got there and the gas station was closed for days. So we left yeah. I and mean, we didn't know if we were gonna make it to the next one. We did. Um, right. And since we've been down, it sounds like the, the government doesn't control the gas anymore completely. Right. So there, I think there's a lot more gas stations now. Yeah, there's still a gas gap, but that's just because there's nothing on that stretch of road. But there are more gas stations, and I would expect there to be more open yeah. along the route. So just top up as often as you can, and that'll help. How many more things you got? A couple. We should just plug in. We're going to plug in while she keeps talking. <laughs> um, so that's about it for the vehicle stuff. Obviously, bringing spare parts is pretty smart, too. We bring extra transmission fluid, um, extra oil. You could bring along a couple extra belts or whatever. Just that's up to you depending on the state of your vehicle. Ours is pretty new, so we're not going to bring a ton of extra parts, but you may need to. And then, um, as far as gear goes, like everybody says, like, are you bringing your bikes or, you know, kayaks or whatever? And there's a lot of stuff you can bring. It just depends on what you want to do while you're down there. Um, so we don't bring our bikes. We actually try to leave behind as much stuff as necessary. We thankfully have a friend's garage that we can leave a bunch of gear behind in because we don't need our climbing stuff, our backpacking stuff, our biking stuff. And it just is more of a liability in the van than anything. We're sitting on the beach. Yeah, so bring a table, bring a chair, bring a fishing pole. A UV black light for scorpion <laughs> searching. Right? Is that yeah. what it's called? Yeah, you well, it's, it's just a black light. I thought it said UV, but anyways, black light <laughs> for looking for scorpions at night. Uh huh. Bring some kind of watercraft, right? Like a stand up oh, paddleboard yeah. or an Pack inflatable grass, kayak, surfboards. Something. Yeah. Spear fishing equipment. You know, things to do beach things. Right. Um, based on our research, you can only sur you can only fish from shore without a fishing license. Yeah. Technically, it's illegal to be fishing from any kind of watercraft without a fishing license in Mexico, so you would need to look into that and decide whether that's worth the cost for you. And I believe you do need a license for spearfishing, too. Sounds like a lot of people just kind of 
I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere, just kind of break the rules. Um, I'm sure there's a hefty fine associated with it if you get caught. Yeah. I think it's $50 for an annual fishing license. So you do you, I'll figure do it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, if you're going to fish a lot, you might as well just get the license. Yeah, for peace of mind, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So the last thing is people ask us, like, what do we need to stock up on? Um, there's actually a lot of grocery stores in Baja and a lot of big stores. So big box stores like Walmart, Target, Whole Foods. Um, I don't know if I'd say a lot, but they're, they're in pretty in the much big every cities. big city. Yeah. yeah, and which are three: <laughs> Ensenada, La Paz, and Cava. Yeah, true. Um, but regardless, there are places to buy things. They may not have the exact things that you want. So if you're very brand specific or flavor specific. Uh, you might want to stock up on things before you go. However, you're not allowed to cross the border with any fresh meat, animal products, fruits, or vegetables. So you can't bring like frozen meat, even though it's frozen, it's still technically fresh meat. You can only bring processed things. So you can bring tuna in a can, you can bring beef jerky, you can bring dehydrated fruit, dehydrated vegetables, but you can't bring anything fresh. So you can't bring eggs, you can't bring cheese, Apples, bananas, like none of that technically is allowed. Um, they may or may not ask you at the border, so if you really want to gamble, you can try to bring some of that stuff. I don't know if they really care. There's also technically limitations on how much alcohol you can bring with you. You're allowed three liters per person of liquor or beer and six liters per person of wine. So again, I don't know if they're really looking or how much they care. I think technically they just don't want you bringing commercial amounts across the border and selling it. Sell it. Um, but there are some limitations there. So do your own research. Um, but as far as stocking up on foods goes, we personally don't really, we're not super picky about what we eat, but if there are certain things that you either need or like that you can only get in the United States, um, like certain health foods or, or things like that, then you might want to get those before you go. Yes. Anything else? I don't know. Is there anything else? That's all on my list. That's everything on the list, so yeah. we appreciate you. <laughs> Keep watching, subscribe, like, comment. Yep. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. Yep, let us know if we missed anything. Also, let us know if there's anything you want to know so we can make <laughs> another video for you. Uh, yep. Thanks and, for watching. And we're not going to cut anything. So you can see me do this. <laughs>